next one is also a very nice gentleman. He is a very experienced guy in the industry, and especially with Fortune 500 uh, companies. That means that he knows all the main things he wants to talk to you today, and those are very kindly connected to the overview of the history and current strategy of the association, detail and the top 10 ways the association supports global security professionals. So, dear professionals, this lovely gentleman will be joining us now, John Petruzzi Jr., President of the Global Board. Hello, John, can you hear us? I think I can hear you just fine. Hopefully you can do the same with me. And if someone could confirm they can see the slides, that'd be great. I can confirm that we see the slides. I want to thank you for joining us a little bit earlier. That's always nice. That means that you're going to have a very nice lunch when you're <laughs> finished with us. Okay, John? <laughs> yeah, I'll have a little bit of coffee while I'm with you. A little early in the, in the U.S., joining you from the greater New York City area. So thank you. So Big Apple, we're hearing you quite loud and clear. So carry on. Perfect. Um, so first and foremost, thank you very much for having me here today. Uh, I have to give a huge shout out to uh, Marco, one of my colleagues at G4S, for uh, bringing me into the, the Security Summit. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the history of uh, ASIS, going to talk to you a little bit about um, what our five-year strategy looks like, the three things that we're really focused on today. The fourth one will be focused on by two of my colleagues, Rochelle and Marco, which is ESRM. And then I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what the top 10 ways <laughs> that ASIS can do to support security professionals as a whole. So with that, let's talk about the association and the history of the association. So the association was founded in 1985, quite some time ago. That <laughs> was really by industrial security specialists focusing very much on government uh, security. What was really cool though is if you look back in the history in 1959, ASIS's first international chapter was actually in Europe. Today, if we fast forward, we look at where we are, we have 34,000 members from around the globe. Those are represented through 240 chapters that are located in 158 countries. Needless to say, a little bit of growth, I'd say, through those years. Um, if you look within the security profession, one of the key initiatives that I mentioned to you earlier uh, of the three is, is global governance. So the association basically for the first 60 years ran as a domestic association with international chapters. Today, I'm very proud to announce that we have a global board of directors, which we'll look at here in a minute. But equally as important is that we're in the midst of standing up two regional boards. It's very important because we wanna set strategy for the security profession and the industry as a whole at a global level, but then we need to be able to deliver locally. And delivering locally, we believe, is going to be much more effective by standing up these regional boards and allowing those regional boards the autonomy, if you will, to carry out that strategy within the countries. In addition to that, the board also now has the four pillars, which we're going to talk a little bit about when we look at the 10 different value propositions to uh, the security professionals in the industry as a whole, one of which is the ASIS Foundation. Now the chair of that sits on the board. We'll talk a little bit more about that. Also our standards and guidelines, which we're also gonna talk a little bit more about. They, they also have a seat on the board. We have our CSO Center that represents over 350 chief security officers from around the globe. And then last, but certainly not least, is our professional certification board. Their chair also sits on um, the global board. That really creates a connected tissue and it allows us to ensure whatever strategy we set globally, we can actually execute to. As I mentioned, I wanted to show this slide very briefly. So this is our second seating of the Global Board of Directors for 2021. As you'll see, I believe there's uh, not only diversity when we think about race and gender, but equally as important is the diversity of thought and from our geography around the world. So we have members from Europe and Africa, Middle East, uh, certainly North America, Latin America as well. So uh, very proud of the board. They're doing a great job and um, let's dive in here to our next topic, which is really about the digital transformation. <laughs> so I talked in the beginning 
about those three strategies we touched on one which is that globalization and governance of that globalization digital transformation has also been an initiative of ours and it's super super important particularly given what we went through in 2020 if you think about rolling that clock back 10 years ago and what it would have done to not only the association but the security profession and industry as a whole the ability to operate remote we were able to keep the wheels on the bus moving around not only in the the association and delivering content and and creating standards and providing timely information but also the ability for our members to continue their organizational resiliency so huge for us we continue to focus on this if you look back in 2020 we held an event called GSX. Uh, we named it GSX Plus. That's normally our, our largest in-person event that travels around the US. If you look back at that now, we had 5,000 people from over 150 countries that joined us. So super impressive there. And again, aligning to the strategy and thank goodness, we were already well down that path. One other area that I wanna to touch on really is about the transformation of what, what I called closed communities. As you'll see on the screen, we have all of these various councils, previously named councils, and they were closed just for the sense that we couldn't open them up. There were only so many members that were allowed within those environments. In pre-digital transformation, there wasn't an ability for us to get out timely information. So today, all of those that you see on the screen, those subject matter areas, those areas of practice, um, as well as uh, special interest groups are now completely open and they're on our platform called ASIS Connects. That gives folks the ability to dive in, grab information they need timely if it's something to do with business continuity or resiliency, something to do with information security, you name it. Uh, all of those topics are available. Very easy as a member, you go in, sign up, and you can consume that information as well as post questions and or content out there. So let's dive into the meat and potatoes here, right? Number 10 on my top 10 list is scholarships and grants. Uh, one of the association's arms that I mentioned is that ASIS Foundation. This is the charitable arm of our association where members have an opportunity both individually and as corporations to make contributions. And those contributions are then ultimately turned around to the members. Those can be chapter, um, accelerator events, they can be individual scholarships. Uh, I think you'll see on the screen there, it's pretty impressive just what was done in 2020. Number nine, also mentioned our standards and guidelines. So ASIS has published 10 standards and guidelines. They obviously serve the association and its members at large. Uh, we're also accredited uh, through the ANSI and also serve as a liaison uh, to various technical committees through ISO. And if you look at what happened um, in 2020, the ability to get information out again was very timely, but we didn't let the, that stop what needed to happen. And what we're focused on in 21 is the continued refinement of those various standards, uh, as well as looking for opportunities for further guidelines. Number eight, professional development should be near and dear to everyone's heart. We stop learning, it's not a good day. So we got a couple of things we'll talk about here. First, this goes back and touches on our digital transformation. There are numerous webinars that are available. In addition, we have e-learning or uh, learning management systems, as I like to call them, where there is just a plethora of information out there, whether it's on security disciplines, whether it's current trends, things that are occurring, within the environment, opportunities to learn, um, they're just endless, right? We also have classroom programs that we hope to get back to here as we roll into the third quarter of uh, 2021. We'll be hosting GSX in Orlando. There'll certainly be a whole plethora of uh, events there for folks to come in and learn on very timely topics. Back to the foundation, one of the other arms, in addition to the scholarships and those accelerators that, that we have in place, is really the research. As we know, uh, research is super important and it has to be timely. So if you look at what happened 
in 2020, as an example, we were tracking the COVID response across all industries and being able to provide that information out. And that doesn't stop, right? Today, it's the same thing. If we look at 2021, right, a lot of folks are focused on what does the return to work look like, right? So we have folks that have been sitting at home, obviously, uh, managing their security business and supporting the business as a whole. Uh, we need to understand what that looks like. Uh, I can tell you, having sat in the, the chief security officer job, if I heard this question once, I probably heard it uh, a dozen, maybe a dozen and a half times in those roles is what's so-and-so doing? So this is an opportunity to take that research, provide that back out, and ultimately guide the organizations that our, our members serve. Number seven, Career HQ. <laughs> this is a good one, right? So we obviously have the uh, job board, but equally as important is the pathway study that was done a few years back. And this really is a, a huge benefit to the members as a whole, but also the organizations that they serve. If we think about what does it look like from coming into the security profession with a degree or coming in as a second career? Maybe I was in the military or was in law enforcement, some other federal or, or governmental role. How do I move from that environment into the private practice? What are the key strategies and what are the things I need to be looking out for um, to, to, again, better myself and understand in my career growth? And again, career coaching and resume writing is also provided there. Super cool for 21. We have a uh, new and I would say very much improved mentor program. This is really an opportunity to tap into the many different resources that the members get at ASIS. There's nothing better than to identify somebody either in your sector, whether it's the business uh, sector that you serve or down to the discipline where you can bounce ideas off of folks. And this is a really, really cool opportunity. Number six, board certifications. So as you can see, we have the APP, the PSP, the PCI, and the CPP. Um, all of those have been updated, particularly the legacy, uh, over the last couple of years. And now I'm proud to announce again, tying back to our digital transformation, that all of this content learning is available online up to and including the proctoring sessions that are dealt with online versus having to physically be in a location as we did historically. Number five, content, content, content. So I think that uh, for those that are members or have seen, we have a security management magazine that is published monthly, uh, digital every other month in print. Um, that's an opportunity for not only you to you to contribute, but also to consume from. In addition to that, we're doing virtual road, uh, road shows, excuse me, virtual uh, lunch and learns. And then we also have distinguished speaking uh, uh, speaker series, excuse me. And those are, are really going to be focused on two different uh, sides of the coin. One being very much industry focused. Those are the services and practices that serve the profession and then the professions themselves, right? So diving into those practitioners and giving, you know, key leaders, whether that's a CFO from an organization and talking about what is the value proposition that they perceive of a chief security officer and their staff uh, to general counsels, to, to business uh, presidents and, and CEOs as a whole. Number four is communities. So communities goes back to the three-pronged strategy that I was mentioning earlier, and this is ASIS's Connects platform. I think what was really cool in 2021, um, or excuse me, 2020, is the fact that um, we stood up a DE&I community. Uh, we also did uh, plenty of different webinars and learning experiences for folks. And then coming in 2021 is a cannabis community particularly domestic in the US, this is an emerging trend and uh, certainly a lot of security risks around that. Number three, local, regional and global value. <laughs> this goes back to the very impressive numbers that I mentioned. So if you look at the 252 chapters, those are local. We look at those regions, those chapters within geographies roll up to 51 different regions. And then we have 15 global groups. Again, super cool that walking into 21, first time in the history of the association since 1955, we'll also be setting up 
a regional board within North America and Europe and hope to in the future, once we hit the thresholds that are established, be able to set up regional boards within the other four geographic regions. Number two, events. Referenced this earlier as far as GSX, uh, GSX Plus last year, GSX in person, but also happening as we speak here throughout uh, the first and second quarter of 2021, we're also doing our U uh, ASIS Europe event from risk to resilience. I've had the opportunity uh, on four different occasions to attend that in person, uh, always fantastic. And I've also had the opportunity to um, present and also um, consume some very good information over the course of the last couple. And uh, we have another one coming up um, this very week. As I mentioned, GSX Plus, 27 to 29 September, will be in Orlando. Uh, one thing that's really cool here is we talk about that digital transformation for those that do not have the ability to travel into the US and make their way to Orlando, the platform will still be stood up just as in last year for a full virtual environment as well. And number one brings us to the last point here, which is that global network. As I mentioned, you know, being able to tap into 34,000 members from around the globe in 158 countries, there's no other, you know, association from a security perspective that can begin to offer those opportunities to folks. So we're certainly proud of our volunteer leaders around the globe. Uh, again, the mentor programs that we've seen, the ability to tap into these resources, not only direct via phone, via email, but also in those communities. So how do you keep up with this? Pretty simple. <laughs> Every form of social media and or virtual environment we're on, you can go tag ASIS um, and certainly follow all the activity that's happening within the association and within its members. So with that, I'm going to stop sharing. I hope. Uh -huh. And answer any questions that folks may have. Well, thanks for sharing. The sharing is over now. It's for question time. Thank you for being so nice to tell us what ACES does around the world. That's a nice class of 2020. Board members from around the world, everybody's still talking, their Facebook friends, their Instagram friends, and we can find on YouTube as well. That's a modern approach. Congratulations, John, a great presentation. That was the best countdown in my life, and I'm doing this job for a long time, so compliments <laughs> for that one. I was trying, trying to give you a little bit of time back there in case folks had questions, but uh, uh, certainly a lot of information to get through. Um, you know, go check it out online, and again, the various social media um, outlets to, to stay in tune with what ASIS can do for the folks. I know why it was so good. It's because the Petruzzi surname brings you the good presentation skills. That's, that's, yeah, that's good. The yeah, the problem is I, I'm Italian. I talk with my hands. It doesn't really work so well on, uh, on the screen know, there. I know, but for this occasion, you'll be our, our private Americano because it's much easier. There to go. Go. I love it. I love so, it. So everybody's talking about the pandemics. Everybody's rethinking all the necessary and unnecessary data, data breaches. Everybody wants to be secure and held his privacy, but a lot of things changed throughout the year, especially for the Americans and uh, all the pandemic, which was uh, a huge mm -hmm. theme and huge thing to talk about in the United States throughout the year. But yes. two questions are not about the pandemic and COVID. Maybe it's much more about the professionals because you were the first guy who actually addressed all the professionals and people who want to be a part of the industry. Number one, how do professionals determine, John, which certification is best for them? Because today we have certificate for this, certificate for that, so right. how do you decide which one you want to have? So it's a, it's a loaded question. Uh, obviously, I, my heart sits with ASIS, but I also uh, hold certifications outside of ASIS. I think it's really surveying the scene understanding what discipline you are, are, are operating within, within the security environment. Certainly, if you're on the cyber side, you're going to lean to 
you know, a CISM, a CISSP. Uh, I think if you look at the continuity and resiliency side, there's a couple of great certifications out there. Um, I look to ASIS, really the capstone to me from a career perspective is the CPP, um, seeing that it covers all of the, the disciplines. But listen, there's no shortage of certificate programs or certifications out there. I think you need to do the research, right? And by the way, many organizations, they have those listed, right, right within their job requirements or nice to haves, if you will, and that should really guide folks in, in their decision process. There is a very interesting question that just popped in, like, <clears throat> is there a magic number of certificates that we need to have <laughs> as a professional? <laughs> Again, another load of questions. I, I do find it quite comical when you look at the end of someone's name and there's, you know, six, eight, ten different uh, certifications there. Um, I, I don't know that there's a magic number, to be honest with you. I think it really, again, comes down to what's the best fit for you um, and for the company that you're working for, right? For me, it's always about uh, that knowledge and skills and continual learning. Um, one of the benefits of certification, in my opinion, particularly board certified certifications is it's not just the time and grade, right, within your role, but it's expanding that knowledge base, right, and the continual learning um, and to strive to close some of those gaps to be able to sit for those certifications. So again, I don't know that there's a, a, a one size fits all. Some people may need six, seven, eight, whatever it is, depending on their role in the organization. Others may be able to have one or two. Huh. Interesting. So it's a personal thing, guys. You can choose from 1 to 100 depending on uh, what path of the job you want to take. If it's uh, right. very complicated, maybe you need more than your neighbor but, or colleague. So uh, yeah. there is always a huge problem, John, with uh, young people, young professionals mm. who want to enter the job industry. And there's always a problem with, oh, you're young. And what mm -hmm. is your experience? Can we do it through other certificates or experience is something which you gain working with the colleagues? Yeah, 100%. So YP, the Young Professionals, is actually a community. As I mentioned, um, those various communities are over 35 to tap into. It's one of the things that we've taken great strides in over the course of the last decade. Um, I'm not ashamed to say it's just very factual. The association was full of a lot of gray hair people just like myself. <laughs> uh, and we needed to look about what's that next generation and the generation after that. Um, so, you know, what I would say is get involved, get in. Um, there's plenty of opportunity. Um, and, and there's opportunity on the certificate side to build, right? There's educational courses to build that knowledge base and get the time and grade to be able to sit for those certifications. But I think one of the most important things as a young professional is leveraging one of the, one of the items I mentioned earlier, Tariq, is um, that mentorship program. Being able to, to dive in and say I'm a physical security professional and put it out on the board, hey, I'm looking for a mentor in this space. Um, nothing better, right? Because it's an opportunity for you to go offline, have conversations with individuals that are in a similar role, have years of experience, and can share, hey, these are some of the things that worked really well for me. These are some of the things that I would try to avoid. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. Everything makes sense when you know what you have to say to people who are inside the industry. I'm outside right. the industry, I'm a media guy, but I understood what you said, so that's good. If yeah. we, if the journalists understand, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> so, so I, I, I must be communicating all right this morning. <laughs> who knows? It is early, but I got the coffee. Cool. So there is a last question for you, just popped out. Has the delivery of the organization's programs, such as educational ones, been impacted by the pandemic? Listen, I, I would say 100%, right? Um, but I go back to what we were able to do through our early digital transformation. We set off on this path um, all the way back in 2016-17 in uh, on a five-year plan. And again, we're coming to the end of that and we'll reboot as all organizations do. Um, but I believe the investments we made uh, and the time we committed to that really served the profession and the industry as a whole um, significantly well. Um, so yes, we had impacts. Um, you know, we made a decision. Our largest in-person event is GSX, as I mentioned. We normally have well over 20,000 people in attendance at that event. 
we were unable to to pull the trigger, so to speak, on on whether that event could happen or not last year, up until the June timeframe with an event going off in September. We were able to literally uh, pivot on a dime there, stand up the digital platform and deliver just tons of content over the course of a few days. And to know that uh, we had 5,000 registrants from over 150 countries to, to tap in was a challenging yes. Uh, lessons learned, 100%, but um, again, I think we were able to respond pretty effectively. By the way, just as the security professionals have done around the globe, you know, um, there's lessons learned that uh, folks are implementing right now from a security and a resiliency perspective in a place like India, which is the, the hotbed, right, of uh, C-19. So, again, it's it's continual learning, it's sharing of information, um, and, and we'll, we'll grow from here. And we'll be in a better place as we go through 21 and beyond. Well, John, start spreading the news I'm leaving today, <laughs> but not towards it. the New York. <laughs> I have to <laughs> gain and more knowledge from another keynote speakers as well. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for joining this virtual summit. And hopefully you will be joining us for a real Bosnian Herzegovinian lunch when you arrive Absolutely. next time. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, folks. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you. No, we appreciate you being with us and uh, say hello to all our fellow Americans who will be also will quite happy to know that they could visit Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina because it's allowed. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye-bye, New York. You too. Bye-bye.